Hello, this is Aiden Keith Hines here with Starlight Productions WS, and welcome to a very special episode. And by the way, this music is from uh, Incompetech.com. That's just like it sounds. And I guess I should probably turn that off. Okay, <laughs> so today we're going to be going over some Cinema 4D stuff. Now, I'm sure if you go to my website, you've seen um, my video of the little helicopter. So we're going to be doing something like that. So the first thing to do is gather our elements. So you open up Safari or whatever web browser, go to TurboSquid.com. That's www.TurboSquid.com, as in the tentacles. And then let's search for, and there was a nice one here that I saw. That's for free. I think it was under Apache, so just search. And TurboSquid is a great site for finding 3D models and stuff. And here we go. So Cinema 4D, at least for the Mac, can import um, OBJ files and well, Cinema 4D files and 3DS files. I think it can import LightWave too. And this one's uh, 3D Studio, so that's okay. And it's a nice high quality Apache file, completely free. So just download. And you have to set up an account. Uh, wrong password. There we go, and just download it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, but well, we're getting started. Um, well, let's download. Let's get started with our thing. So, here's Cinema 4D, and it's sort of the Mac equivalent of 3ds Max, you know, because us poor Mac users can't use it. And so, go up here to the little cube, hold, and press plane, and that automatically brings up a plane. Now let's resize it a bit. Uh, just use your middle mouse button to scroll out, and or you can just use this to zoom out and in, and let's make this big. Then go over here to object, and set width and height to 40, then what we're going to do is go over here, click and hold on that, and select formula. And that's a little wave formula for our water. And then just drag that so the arrow, not that way, but down. There's a down arrow. Then that automatically applies itself. And we're going to move this over here and make it a little less tall, a little wider, and a little longer. Uh, there we go. And let's Command C, Command V, or Edit, Copy, Edit, Paste. Drag that one on too. Then drag it over here. Sorry, my little recording thing doesn't like this, but copy, paste one more time. And let's drag this one like over here. Okay, so that's pretty good. Oops, can't save from the demo. So if you press that, it automatically starts playing. And stop. Then what we can do is click, double click down here, and it makes a new texture. Double click on that, open this little window, or we can just do it over here. But I like having the window. Then go um, set the color to let's say like a light blue sort of thing, and that's that's pretty good. Then go over to reflection, click the little checkbox and set um, brightness down and that is pretty good so we're not going to spend so much time on that and then just drag it out and do command R to render it and that's not too great but it'll do for now and hopefully by now our helicopter is downloaded yep just double click on that and quit and the nice thing about um, uh, uh, Cinema 4D is that you can just drag files directly in. So for some, for some reason it opens up a new folder, so we can just redo our little ocean. Yeah. And resize it all you want. And 
You can add a texture if you want, but I already showed you how to do that, so we'll focus on the helicopter. So it imports all its separate pieces, so to fix that problem, we're going to click the bottom one and click shift click this one, not the top one, but the second to the top one, then drag them all into the top one. So now they're all parented to this. So if you move this one around, they all follow. And so now we can animate this however we want. So let's say, let's move this back over here. Then we add a keyframe, so go to coordinates. For Mac users, command. For Windows users, control. Or right click, actually. Command click on this little thing. Then open up animation, add keyframe. Then move it forwards. Command, animation, add keyframe. Actually, move it back a little bit. Add keyframe. Then move the timeline forward like there, then move it forwards, and add keyframe. Okay, so now when it plays, the helicopter just moves forward. There we go. So now we can also add some rotation, you know, so open the rotate tool and rotate it. Then from the rotation. Yeah. And we can also do some camera movement. So let's see over here. Yeah, add camera. Then go to the beginning and camera keyframe and keyframe and at the end. Then just on Mac users, um, option to rotate. I don't know what it is for Windows, sorry. Um, then option and move with the middle mouse button to move. And, or you can just move with this. Then do and select the camera, add keyframe, add keyframe, then view, so for some reason it's not working for me, but should be working, so, or we can just rotate the object of the camera in here. So just rotate it like that. So the camera just follows. There you go. So we can do some more, but um, for now I think that's good. Uh, let's go to... That displays what the camera sees. It's pretty good. Now, one more thing we can do is add some rotor motion. Add some motion to the rotors. So, um, make them rotate. So, what we're going to do is click here, then go all the way down to the bottom, select a rotor, and command click on the rotation, add keyframe, then go to 35, and rotate it quite a bit. You know, because we want it to be spinning nicely. Then add another keyframe. So now the rotators are spinning. The uh, rotors are spinning nicely. Okay, I think we're just about out of time. But um, I only have the demo, so I don't know much about rendering. But that should be pretty easy. So I'll see you next time on Starlight Productions. Ws.